I am Agustin Siaponi. I'm from Argentina. I am the Argentine Cochrane Center Director. And I will talk about health technology assessment and rapid reviews. Uh, what are they? How to do it? How can they improve decision making? In our experience in focusing methods and in applicability. Okay. Uh, systematic reviews and HDAs take an acceptable long time, but information is needed now. So rapid review has emerged as an approach to synthesizing evidence for informing decision making in healthcare settings. But it is uncertain if much shorter time frame could be adequate to capture properly the key evidence. So we have on one side the traditional systematic review that are time consuming, human resource consuming and, and are costly. On the other side, the rapid reviews that have a huge heterogeneity about procedures. In one sense, Traditional reviews are like vinyls, are the, the best quality of sound. Um, rapid reviews may be an iPod that is very practical and have really good sound too. I think that it's important to, to have, uh, in, to put in common the terminology, the products and terminology. For example, Full systematic review and HTAs have takes a lot of time, from six months to three years, also technology assessment report. And here is the, the maximum quality of evidence synthesis, but the worst timeliness. In a second group, we have rapid assessment, accelerated systematic review, rapid review. There are all the terminologies for this. Tech notes, technology overviews taking months, from three to six months. In other groups, taking weeks, are the rapid response, mini HTA and rapid HTA. And the quickest ones are quick notes, five to seven days, ultra rapid response, hours to days, and scope searches, half a day. So we have a wide range, as we see from days, like scoping and ultra rapid response, weeks and months to rapid review and ITA, and years, ITA and full systematic reviews. But how do we develop a procedure for the best available answer within a proper time frame? Uh, recently was published um, a study about an international survey about the trade uncertainty for speed, how much uncertainty are decision makers and guideline developers willing to accept when using rapid reviews. Many of the conveners of the rapid review group are, are here in the, between the authors. Um, 3,125 decision makers and developers worldwide answer our survey. The key message is if we assume traditional systematic review taking 18 months, have the 100% of the evidence and the better quality in, in a picture, a systematic review, a rapid review take uh, three months in this, in the scenarios presented to the decision makers take around 90 percent of the evidence and 10 percent of error tolerance so we see the picture with lower definition we didn't assess in this study what happened with rapid reviews taking less than one month so Several agencies increasingly do rapid reviews or rapid responses. 23 out of, 20, out of 25 surveyed agencies did rapid reviews in 2006. But they varied a lot in methodology, 
search strategy, quality assessment, restriction on study type, analysis, and inclusion or not of economic evaluations. About our setting, the IECS, our institution, is an Argentinian HTA agency that provides reports to public institutions, social security, and private insurance entities. Since 2012, we produce ultra rapid HTA made in up to three days, aiming to solve specific coverage problems often related to a single patient needs. But we also produce rapid HTA that allow a more exhaustive assessment of the PICO question applicable to similar patients. Decision makers systematically complete a brief survey on usefulness and satisfaction within two weeks of receiving the ultra rapid HTA. So we produce both types of documents, ultra rapid and rapid HTA, and we get to answer we want to answer, if, are there differences in conclusions, amount and direction of the evidence between these two types of uh, reports? A second objective is, what is the decision-making perception about ultra-rapid HTA, and which is the agreement between coverage decisions and ultra-rapid HTA's conclusions? So, the main feature of our HTAs are these. We take in ultra rapid two to three days, in rapid four to eight week, weeks. The developer training is very high in the ultra rapid and moderate to high in rapid. The supervision is one senior tutor and the whole team for the rapid. The previous scoping is not formally for the ultra rapid, but it's formally for the rapid uh, HTA. Focused search that mentioned Valerie is very it's highly intensive in ultra rapid and moderately in rapid. And the evidence source are the same for both documents: systematic review, clinical practice guidelines, health technology assessment documents, coverage policies, and complementary primary studies. So, to answer our objective, we selected a pair of documents, of both type of documents, oriented to the same research question. All the rapid HTA were published after the ultra-rapid HTA within the following 12 months. The, traditional, the additional evidence identified by the rapid HTA, which, which was compiled at, at the the later search date than the ultra rapid one was excluded and the conclusion modified wherever necessary. A pair of independent researchers extracted outcomes and disagreement were solved by a third researcher. Additionally, we analyzed the routine survey to decision makers' perceptions to study decision maker perception and compare their coverage decision against the conclusion of the report. So we selected 32 pairs of documents and 24 met our inclusion criteria and were finally included. What we, what we found was that 92% of rapid HTA included more evidence than ultra rapid. In what extent, in what amount? Well, uh, rapid HTA found 3.5 more guidelines, 2.2 more systematic review, and one more randomized control trial than ultra rapid in average. These are all statistically significant. Additionally, the rapid HCA included 50% more safety and quality of life outcomes than ultra rapid HCA in this sample of 24 pairs. But despite the more evidence considered by rapid HTA, there was a 96% of the 
of conclusion matching with ultra rapid HTA. The only mismatch was because a rapid HTA consider a technology for selected cases and ultra rapid HTA consider the same technology only as experimental. So there is a not big deal with the mismatch. Additionally, from May 2014 to February 2016, we collected a total of 68 responses to the survey from 117 reports, 58%. The three most frequently consultations were related to cancer, neurological, and musculoskeletal disorder, and half of the cases were related to drugs. In 10% of the cases had pending coverage decisions. So, what decision makers final, finally decide were to reject a technology in 47% and accept it in 43%. They found the ultra rapid HDA very useful in 71% and pretty useful in 25%. They consider influential, very influential in 47% and pretty influential in 38%. They consider that decision, a decision improvement as a lot in 50% and pretty in 40%. They consider very satisfactory in 81% and satisfactory in 18%. And that is important, the agreement between the, the decision makers, final decision, coverage decision and report conclusion have had an agreement of 77%, no agreement in 15% and have pending decision in 10%. So our conclusions were that we found no serious mismatching between our ultra rapid HTAs and our rapid HTAs. Although ultra rapid HTAs include less amount of evidence, and in this sample not reporting important outcomes, safety and quality of life, life, ultra rapid HTAs seem to be reliable source for the short term decision making. Most decision makers found ultra rapid HTA useful and their final decision were influenced and improved by them. By them. Agreement with final decision was high. I think that the time frame to produce evidence is becoming shorter from quick and dirty to quick and best. It is critical to determine that ultra rapid HTAs produced by highly trained teams are also reliable for the short-term decision-making in other settings. Although there, are, there was a high conclusion matching, the slower evidence synthesis are still useful since they, pro they provide a more complete evidence picture and a possible better informed decision-making. So we can do quick, but I think that we need standardization.